Good afternoon. I'm Ernie Bauer with the CSIS Southeast Asia Program, and I'm here today with the U.S. Ambassador to ASEAN, David Carden. Thank you for joining us, Thank David. you for having me. You've been in the job for five months now. What, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your role and what the U.S. mission to ASEAN has, has done uh, since you've arrived in Jakarta? Uh, it's been actually very gratifying, the reception that I've gotten in this, uh, these first five months. Uh, we've convened any number of conversations uh, over the course of that time period with uh, my new friends and colleagues, the ambassadors to ASEAN from each of the countries, as well as the dialogue partners that exist. Uh, Japan also has an ambassador, Takio Yamada, and uh, we are in regular conversations on issues that are part of our portfolio, which is, as you, w as you well know, is a very broad one. Yes. You must be planning for President Obama's trip to Indonesia in, in November. He'll be there for the EAS, uh, East Asia Summit, and the third ASEAN U.S. Leaders uh, Summit. Could you tell us a little bit about preparations for those and what could we expect from, from those, that, that trip? One of the things we've been doing over the course of the uh, early part of my tenure is negotiating a plan of action for the United States engagement with ASEAN going forward for the next five years. Uh, that plan of action is very detailed, quite uh, granular, mm. and it will provide the basis for a conversation in Bali in November. And items will be, I think, highlighted and uh, initiatives pursued that come from the plan of action that has been negotiated. The plan of action has been something which has been uh, uh, thought through very deeply and in consultation with our ASEAN friends. So that will be the template for where we go from here. Trade seems to be a, a core part of, of engagement in Asia and, and certainly in our foreign policy in Asia. Would it ever be possible for the United States to have a free trade agreement with the 10 ASEAN countries? And if not, what are the key obstacles uh, to pursuing that? If so, what's the, what are the prospects? Well, ever is a long time. I say to some of my <laughs> friends that causation has a twin, and that's time. Yes. Uh, so I can't speak to that. It's also true, of course, that my colleagues at uh, USTR are responsible for those trade issues. They speak for the administration on them. Uh, I can say that trade, obviously, is an important question. Uh, these are ec economies that are in different states of development, some of them quite advanced, as you well know, like Singapore, yes. some of them not very advanced and more agrarian, such as Laos. Mm. They are not in the same place. Uh, but part of ASEAN's plan is for them to evolve and for the, the uh, lower Mekong countries, for example, to uh, be given opportunities to further develop their economies. So, as I said, ever is a long time, but at this juncture, uh, I think that's the, the place that the, the region is, is, is presently situated. You are indeed the first U.S. ambassador to ASEAN resident in Jakarta, so in a sense you're, you're pioneering a bit. Could you tell us a little bit about the day, a day in the life of, uh, of David Carden as ambassador uh, to ASEAN? And also, um, what do what you think that might look like 10 years from now, uh, sure. after things uh, you've institutionalized some of, of this? What you're uh, about? Well, there's been a lot of curiosity about my arrival. In fact, I think curiosity understates it. There's a great deal of interest. Great. And so there are invitations of all types to speak and to write and to, uh, to, to, to go to meetings and the like, as you might imagine. We've been trying to do a number of things in this time period. Uh, building the mission is an important aspect of what we're trying to accomplish, and I'm happy to say that in the course of the last five months we've doubled the size of the mission in times which are both a, a resource constrained and where we have space issues. Yeah. I've been spending a great deal of time on that question. We've, we've also been trying to identify those issues that we can most immediately work on with our new ASEAN friends, mm -hmm. and, and they are several in number, and as a consequence we address those very regularly. So apart from waking up in the morning, having breakfast and exercising, which I do every morning, uh, I make it to the mission or make it to the secretariat or I make it to one of uh, the, the ambassadorial offices and we are in the conversations that are advancing the interests of the country going forward and I think the interests of the region as well. And, and channeling ahead 10 years, you think uh, there will be more institutions uh, around the U.S.-ASEAN relationship? Uh, one of the first things that I did when I arrived was ask uh, any number of countries to send an ambassador. I think it's extremely important that we engage ASEAN across a, a much broader spectrum. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say I think that will be happening. And uh, Secretary Clinton also requested uh, by letter this uh, July, I believe, that other countries send ambassadors to ASEAN. 
Uh, I expect early next year the first will begin to arrive. I'm hopeful that there'll be any number of them in the, in the coming years. Of course, all of them have, or many have, a double-hatted ambassador. I'm talking about an ambassador to, to ASEAN alone. Mm. So that will be a change, I believe. I think it's also true that the capacity of ASEAN to actually carry forward the conversations that it has undertaken in EAS and in all the ASEAN four will improve, and, and, and they will be uh, um, made more robust as a consequence of the engagement with its dialogue partners. And it's also the case that our own mission will grow. Uh, it will have very many different uh, additional components. As, uh, as you may know, our portfolio includes things such as disaster uh, relief right. and uh, uh, pandemic preparedness, climate change, uh, trafficking in persons and uh, traffic in wildlife. Experts with regard to those issues, I think, will uh, appear on the scene at various times and we'll collaborate with our friends to sort of move those agenda items forward. So I expect that the mission will grow in the coming years and I expect that the missions of, our, uh, of other countries will also not only be established but will grow as uh, ASEAN takes the stage to uh, push the agenda forward, which they've defined for themselves. Well, David Carden, I wish you the best of luck in Jakarta. Thank you for le your leadership there, and thanks for coming to see us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Okay.